let's continue our discussion on transistors now. We sort of have the transistor defined in our mind as a device that looks like this, sort of a black box here with three leads and collector, emitter, and base are the name of the leads here. It's a three lead device. There here is the transistor right here. And you can see the little black area here with the three leads coming out. We have a couple operational rules for the transistor. Namely, we said if the voltage on the base is greater than the emitter's voltage by six tenths of a volt, then the transistor will be on. And what on means is a collector emitter current will be allowed to flow. The connect collector and the emitter essentially could become a conducting path and current can flow. If the voltage of the base is any less than this here, any less than the emitter voltage plus six tenths of a volt, the transistor will be off and the collector emitter current will not be allowed to flow. <clears throat> and in the case where the transistor is on, the current that flows through the collector emitter, in other words, down this big conducting path, the one that's switched on and off, will always be much, much bigger than the base emitter path, the pink path right here. And by much bigger, we're talking about factors of 50, 80, 100, or even 200. So the, tr the transistor definitely behaves like a current amplifier. So we come in here now, we have this little form factor here. Notice if you get yours, I have the flat face down. Uh, but if you look on the internet when you want to try and understand sort of what each one of these pins are, you sort of look at the, just do a Google search for a transistor and trying to find a picture of something like this. When it's oriented so the flat face is towards you like this here, the middle lead is always going to be the base. This lead over here is always going to be the emitter, and this lead over here is always going to be, excuse me, the collector is over here to the right, and the emitter is the one that's all the way over to the left. So that's sort of what it looks like for you there. Um, that's when the flat, flat face is facing towards you, the way I have it oriented now. And of course, if you reverse it, if you have the flat face down, I don't know what your favorite orientation is going to be to hold this thing. It looks like it rocks around a bit less when the flat face is down. Then, of course, the collector will be all the way over here on the left, the emitter will be all the way on the right, and the base remains in the center right there. So what we'd like to do then, we want to go ahead and wire up the transistor here in this video using those LEDs as our proxy for the amount of current that's flowing. We think we can demonstrate that current flow effect in transistors with the LED. So I'm just going to insert the transistor into the breadboard. Notice you don't have to be very violent or anything with the transistor. Just spread the leads just a little bit until they both, all three leads fit in separate columns on the breadboard. We want to keep them all separate so we're really using the power of the breadboard in this video here. And the transistor, just like an LED, sort of needs these resistors in series with things we connect it to to keep it from blowing out. And so what we'll do is we're going to take this 100 ohm resistor here and we're going to get an LED. And we're going to be very careful with the LED and make sure that the flat LED is sort of facing towards the transistor. We'll connect one end of an LED to the output of this resistor here. So this will be our first connection here. And what we have here, let me just make sure you understand what we're doing here. This resistor, 100 ohm resistor, brown, black, brown, is connected directly to 9 volts. This is where I'm going to put the 9 volt battery in just a minute here. So it's connected directly to 9 volts. And then the resistor, output of the resistor, feeds the LED on the opposite end of the flat side. And on, as the current goes through the LED, comes out of the flat side, I'm feeding that right into the collector lead of the transistor, right into the collector there. So that's what I have. And then what we'll do after that is we sort of said in the video a couple times ago that this emitter of the transistor is always going to be grounded like that. So let's keep it grounded like that. So see, I've already sort of connected somewhat of a circuit here. Like if current was allowed to flow through that collector emitter branch, if I just recap and draw the transistor here a little bit the way we drew it before, this is the electrical schematic of it like this. This is the collector, this is the emitter, and this is the base right here. So what I've essentially done is I've just made a connection from power right here, say my 9 volts is going to be right here, 9 volts. I'm sending it through a 100 ohm resistor, through an LED, and right there into the transistor. So that's sort of what I'm doing here. Here's the resistor, here's the LED, here's the transistor. The current can travel through the resistor, through the LED, and into the transistor like that, and we're grounding the emitter. Okay. So I'm not going to connect power yet because I'm not quite ready to go. But I hope you'll agree then that this LED will glow in proportion to the brightness, in proportion to the current that will be passing through the collector emitter branch of this transistor. So that's why we have the LED and so we'll get some indicator of how much current is going through that leg of the transistor once it's wired on. Okay, 
Next thing I'll do is I'm going to get another 100 ohm resistor and I'll sort of connect it to some miscellaneous spot on the breadboard like this because I want to put another LED in the circuit here that feeds the base of the transistor. So I'm being very careful now. It looks like things are overlapping. I don't know how good your view is on the video. But what I have here is the flat edge of the second resistor is connected directly to the base of the transistor. And then I'm coming over here with the LED. Oops, let me just spread these leads out just a tad bit more. It's okay to bend the leads just a little bit here. I have the other side of this LED sort of connected to an open column here to which I'm going to connect another resistor, another 100 ohm resistor in there like that. So see what we have then is we have the one end of a resistor sort of not really connected to anything, just ready, we'll make a connection to it in a minute. So if you imagine your current, you go through this resistor, you'd hook up with this input side of the LED or the side that's opposite to the flat edge, go through the LED, out of the flat edge side, and you're connected now directly to the base of this transistor here. Make sure I get all the connections right. There we go, right to the base of the transistor. So the current, this is going to be the LED that feeds the base current that can hopefully turn on the transistor if we can get this base to be 0.6 volts higher than the emitter over here, which is grounded. Okay, so what we'll do then, lastly, is we'll just get a long wire here that we can sort of use in a flexible way. We're going to connect it to the input side of that base resistor, and this is the wire we're going to use to sort of test the transistor. We're going to take this one, this wire, and we're going to stick it into 9 volts, then we're going to stick it in the ground in 9 volts and sort of see what happens. So believe it or not, we're done. Uh, before we turn it on, I just want to do a quick recap of exactly what we've done here. Here's the transistor. According to the electrical schematic, the way we like to draw things right here. This is the base right here, this is the collector, and this is the emitter. So all we've done is we've taken 9 volts, which we'll turn on in just a second here. There's the 9 volt supply. We have a 100 ohm resistor here, which we're going to use to protect the transistor. And the 100 ohms feeds an LED directly. So there's an LED with that little triangle in there. The flat edge is over here for sure. And that flat edge then, if I just, let me just lower this C a little bit here, goes around like that and it connects directly to that collector of the transistor. That's what we have on that one leg right here. That's the 9 volts, the first 100 ohm going to the collector out the emitter here, and the emitter here is of course grounded. This is at zero volts right here. We have that on black. And then what we've done is I hope you see just from this drawing right here that this LED will glow in proportion to the current that must be traveling through the collector emitter leg. So the LED is in there for. Then what we have is we sort of have another, another LED right here. The flat edge is right there. Let me see if I can sneak that triangle in there like that. Yeah, there's the LED. We have another 100 ohm resistor protecting it, and the transistor for that matter, another 100 ohm resistor right there. And what we have now, we sort of have a loose wire here, just sort of loose, and we have this probe end right here. And what we can do with this probe end, we're going to stick it 9 volts to inject some current in the base and hopefully turn the transistor on. Then we can also pull it out and stick it in 0 volts to turn off the transistor so we can see exactly what happens. So this, in a nutshell, is what we built. And hopefully you see this leg here, the 9 volts to the 100 ohm, the LED to the collector. That's the top here. Here's 9 volts all along this row. Here's that 100 ohm resistor. Here's it feeding the LED, output of the LED, right into the collector of the transistor. The emitter is grounded right here. That's what this yellow wire is doing. It's grounding the emitter. And I have a, another 100 ohm and an LED. Here's the other 100 ohm right here, the second one, feeding a second LED right here, connected to that middle terminal or the base of the transistor. And here's my free wire here that I can stick into the 9 volts or ground, depending on what I want to do. So let's just do it then and watch transistor action happen. Actually, what we'll do, because the video is getting a bit long, we'll pause right here and we'll turn this on in the very next video.